So last night I took an Uber to this hotel. Um, and the Uber driver um, was asking me like, oh, well, are you in school, work and whatever? I told him I'm a communist. And we started talking more. He tells me he's a political, he's going to school for political science. And um, he, he, he's, he says he doesn't know about Marxism, Leninism, but he's very interested in ecological Marxism. And so over the course of the conversation, I explained to him that Ecological Marxism is not any separate ideology itself. It's just a part. Uh, it's just an, a really an, a, a one part of an understanding of the modern struggles we face as, as Marxists, as communists. Um, I told him that um, Marxism and Leninism, as we know, is the, pro the one proven successful ideology that's proven to uh, be able to, by using this social science of Marxism, Leninism, not only once, but very many times, it's been reproducible. No matter what country you're in, when you use Marxism, Leninism, it's the real social science of uh, organizing the people, creating the revolution, and taking control of the state as the masses of the working class. And so, you know, I told him, like, you really should study Marxism, Leninism. Because ecological Marxism, because he, he, he's explaining it to me at first, I've heard of it before, but I, I wanted to hear his understanding of it. He says, uh, it's basically, you know, understand the fact that if we don't, um, you know, stop capitalism soon, then, you know, our planet is going to die. You know, we're going to ruin our planet. And, I t and like I said, I tell him, I'm like, yeah, this, this is true. And this is an understanding that Marxist Leninists have. You know, any, every Marxist Leninist or every Marxist in general should be a, be an ecological Marxist. And so I wanted to also use this opportunity to bring attention to the fact that when Marx originally started Marxism and, you know, a hundred years and then a hundred years ago with Lenin, you know, and, and Stalin and Mao, whenever these revolutions were happening and Marxism, Leninism was being developed then, it wasn't as urgent um, in regards to our environment. You know, um, in Marxism, we know that there's evolution and there's revolution. Marxism studies uh, the contradicting forces, social forces in history and how it develops, you know, through, through different phases. And... Throughout time, society naturally evolves, you know, but the thing that actually changes, um, makes a definite change in the social order, social and economic order of, of a society is a revolution. You know, with, with evolution, we don't, it could take hundreds, it could take hundreds, maybe thousands of years for society to evolve to, to a better form of society, you know? Um, but with revolution, whenever the masses, that, that means the majority of people who in class society, which we've had for thousands of years, where the ruling class, a small select few at the top, basically uh, control the lives of everybody else. Whenever these masses, the majority, consciously come aware of their circumstances and then use science to try to change those circumstances and through trial and error eventually um create a revolution and take back control and this this is when we have a change in the social and economic order of things um the thing is we we cannot wait for um, society to naturally evolve at this point, you know, he, he, you know, a hundred years ago, the, the main message of Marxism and Marxism Leninism was we need to liberate the people, the workers, you know, the workers shouldn't have to sell themselves as slaves and give up most of the value they create with their labor. Because when you work for a boss, you're making hundreds, maybe thousands of more dollars an hour for your boss but you're only getting paid uh, enough to survive because the worker is a commodity for sale. 
the worker is a part of the production process, a piece of the production process that is 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 just bought and used and is 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 up kept up kept by making sure this part of the production process this part of the machine the human worker is fed at least adequately fed and has has a place to sleep usually you know basically meet their meet the organism's basic needs and this organism can continue to work to serve this production process in the system and so the you know marxism argues those workers are entitled to all the wealth they create and they if they take control of the state they can democratically decide what they what they want to collectively do with that wealth and you know how much they want to put back in society how much they want to keep for their individual selves and all that and they can decide that you know by organizing all the different sectors of labor and having a working class democracy there's a difference between what they call bourgeois democracy and proletarian democracy or the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie and the dictatorship of the proletariat society class society is always the dictatorship of one class over another so the goal of marxism leninism is to have that majority class the workers class because mo the majority of people in the country are the workers have them take control of the government and have a, a one-party system which is a working class party which decides those things instead of just having people who own the workers and own everything just decide everything for themselves that small percent so this this is the main argument of marxism leninism the main argument of marxism itself but now in this day and age with capitalism taken to such an extreme and such big development in, in technology so that we're, we're really we're really taking so many resources out of the planet creating so much waste and destroying destroying our environment in the process and that is mainly because with capitalism um the rich do whatever is most profitable in capitalism you you don't have a whole society coming together and voting on what kind of what kind of um what kind of practices they want to have you know when dealing with the environment and these resources so it's usually some rich guy sitting at a desk saying I don't care if I damage the environment, I'm trying to make some money. <laughs> and, you know, we have regulations to stop that, but the regulations are not enough, you know, and the regulations often end up getting taken back or, you know, like I said, they don't go far enough because the capitalists have pretty much, pretty much control over our whole government. I wrote a book about a state capitalism. Um, if you look it up on Amazon, my book, State Capitalism by Austin Samargo. So check it out. But anyways, the point is, if we do not have a successful revolution in a lot of these um, very big capitalist nations who, who by allowing these rich people to um, destroy our environment continuously, if, if we don't have a revolution soon, you know, our planet could, you know, not be sustainable for too much longer. And so that's that's where ecological Marxism comes in, and I don't I don't see ecological Marxism as a separate ideology ideology from Marxism itself, and um, that's what I explained to this Uber driver yesterday. It's something that any Marxist should agree with. You know, it's very obvious. You know, and so so it, it's basically just one um, understanding within modern day Marxism. Um, there was one thing I wanted, one more thing I wanted to say here. It's not coming to me right now, though. So I, I guess it not, not, must not be that important. But thank you if you listen to all this. I hope everyone has a great day.